Hello, welcome to this video on how to spot the issues in the contract law problem questions. What this is going to do is help you spot what to talk about in those questions where it doesn't tell you. Uh, so where it says rights and remedies, for example. So for AQA, law paper 3, that is questions 10 and question 11. So what this video is doing is not looking how to apply the law or indeed explaining the concepts. It's literally just looking for what you need to do, what you need to look for when analysing the questions to know what content is covered. So there are some clues you can look to, uh, but there are other resources to focus on how to outline those elements and how to explain the law and so on. So questions 7 and 8 tell you what you need to discuss. So we're not going to focus on questions 7 and 8 because question 7 suggests you, sorry, asks you to look for suggesting an outcome and it also tells you the broad area of law. So for example, the contract law that could be intention to create legal relations it could be consideration and it tells you you need to drill down to the specific area so we're not going to focus on that question eight is that kind of full hit of a problem so for example if it is offered acceptance for 10 marks then it could be in that question eight um, or misrepresentation comes up fairly often as well so the question asks you to advise on liability and it tells you the broad area again so you don't need to guess or work out what you need and it's about explaining, applying and analysing all elements in that question. So we're not going to focus on those. Question 10 and 11 asks about rights and remedies after a large scenario question. And so you need to work out the issues to be discussed. You know, a good piece of advice is to use the first part of the problem or first five minutes of your exam to work through that. So kind of work through question 10 and 11, questions 7 and 8. Remembering that only... Uh, the problem questions only come up once so if it appears in question seven it's not going to appear again on the paper the only exception to this is the multiple choice questions if it comes up there it could come up again so if it comes up in question seven then you know it's not going to be a problem question 10 and 11 so what you're doing is ruling out so for example if often acceptance comes up in question seven then of course you're not going to have to look at the same issue in question 10 and 11 so you're sort of ruling out things misrepresentation appears in question eight you know it's not going to appear again so use the first five minutes of your exam to work out the problems in each one that'll say you want set you on the right course so we're going to focus on question 10 question 11 now question 11 is slightly different isn't it in that it's got 23 marks for the uh, the elements so like the rights and remedies and then there's seven marks on the theory you know in this it could be balancing conflicting interests um, or morality for example it could be something else it could be theory contract but generally it's one of those two. So with offer and acceptance, the trick here is to remember they always come up together in problem questions and it's usually in the form of a negotiation between two or more people. So that is how you know already it's going to be offer and acceptance and what you're doing is tracing from start to finish the legal obligations. You might have more than one person. You know, you might have two people who've, made, who've been received an offer and they might try to say which one is or has accepted it so it might be that there's an advert or a reward or a promotional campaign and then what it needs you to do is analyze the intention it takes to treat issues you might see as well someone do a counter offer so in that negotiation you know and often an offer he will try to enforce the original offer whereas counter offer as we know reject is a rejection sometimes you might see somebody try to revoke an offer and so you know there's often acceptance issues. The question is, has it been done before acceptance or not? Be careful also with requests for information because requests for information are not offer, not acceptance, but they can look like a counter offer. So you need to make sure you're aware of the differences between those two. And of course, look for problems with acceptance as well. Is there a delay of the accepted by conduct? You know, that kind of thing as well. So the next issue is intention to create legal relations. So usually this is promises made in existing relationships such as family, friends and neighbours. Um, and what we do is look at the reportable presumption that there is no intention to create legal relations or whether it's a halfway house, for example. Um, but then what you're doing is you're looking at does the relationship change at any point or do they have some sort of business relationship? Do they do work for each other and that kind of thing? So you need to make a balanced judgment. How serious is that? Pro um, that is the promise. Often the issue in your papers is not about businesses because if there's a contract between a business, the ones you are going to look at is, is the Consumer Rights Act. 
Now, the consumer rights access is always legal relations, so that's not going to be a problem question, is it? However, if it's a private uh, or it's business to business, then that could be. However, that, that's covered by the Sales of Goods Act, and it's not on the specification, so it's more likely to be family, friends, and neighbours, and you just go through the rebuttable presumption for that. Consideration. So, what is it? This is probably the toughest one to spot. Um, normally, it's when people are making a swap or an exchange of services in a non consumer context. If it's a consumer context consideration, it won't be an issue. So, you don't need to discuss that because consumer, it's just about implied terms then. So, it is just about in that individual to individual. That's what we're looking to do. Now, you've got to look first of all for value. So, the thing usually will be not have not have sufficient value so you know or if it has then of course that's pretty easy to to pick out in terms of promise uh it's made on the basis of something being done for the person in the past so for example you've got this past consideration there's no consideration what you look for there is i will do something because you've done something for me in the past and so you know what you need to discuss is the rules around past consideration what about if cons considerations move from a third party so this means that one person is trying to enforce rights which for an item they didn't buy for example or a service they didn't buy and so it's about looking on the rules of privacy then and you know you need to discuss those um, you can also consider has a person got a duty to do something already if they have have they gone above and beyond that duty so you can see if they've done anything extra because usually they'll be asking for some extra money for example you've also got a link between this rule and economic duress so has pressure been put on somebody to pay more money even though they're not doing anything else that triggers two issues that triggers consideration and also triggers the economic duress concept as well privacy is technically a separate topic but comes under consideration so again this is about the third party enters into the agreement on behalf of another now the third party going to benefit for someone else in the agreement but it's usually contained with consumer rights act so for example somebody buys we've seen examples where somebody has bought a tattoo for someone else and um, then it's the privity issue or somebody's bought a washing machine for someone else and it's about using the privity rules usually then it's a defense you know in criminal and tort law it's easier to spot defenses you know they're intoxicated or they've contributed to their own negligence in this we're just looking at privacy because what the other person would say is we've not got a contract with you so you can't enforce rights so it's not a defense technically but that's what you need to be thinking along the lines of and of course what you'd need to do is look at the contracts right to third parties at 1999 and look is the third party identifiable so look deeply is it the person is i'm buying this for my mum or I'm buying this tattoo for a person. Of course, you're going to know who it's for because that person comes in to get the tattoo. Okay, so for types of terms, we have express terms and we have implied terms. We're just going to quickly look at how to spot express terms. They're really, really easy. Um, but it's about knowing what to do next, isn't it? So usually express terms of things have been agreed and the scenario tells you this person's agreed to do this. But it doesn't necessarily show you the negotiation that might do so you know an example there is x agreed to deliver magazines to y that's an express term you know or you might have express terms such as relation to time now we're going to come to time in a minute if time is there time's of the essence it's always an express term it's always a, a condition as well but you've got to look at the express term where it's been breached and you've got to follow that through haven't you right to the end you know so you've got um an express term and if it's been breached you work out what type of term it is and then what are the remedies now the trick as well we've seen this a couple of times is sometimes you have express and implied terms through consumer rights act so you might have for example somebody again delivering magazines but it has to be on time but then that's been an implied term through the consumer rights act but also an express term because they've said you know it needs to be done by a certain time or you could imagine that if it's a a weekly magazine it shouldn't be delivered late because then it loses its value so yeah we need to make sure express them if we spot them but it might also be in a negotiation so if you spot the negotiation then uh, you can easily pick out the key terms and then you can take that through to the end is there a contract 
in that negotiation is it often acceptance if so it's an express term and of course look at the remedies usually it'll be 